I was not able to create flames coming out of the back of me though. I think the historical term for this is stabity stab stab. Stabity stabity, yeah, just yeah. rip your guts out. When you win a tournament fight with a spin move, you're gonna look back on all this and laugh. And that will not happen. Welcome to Gameology, experts try. Today we're trying For Honor. I'm Paul Suda, HEMA instructor, 15 years, X Medieval Times, X Competitive Jester. I'm Drew Curtis, actor, stuntman. I've been doing that for 10 plus years, studying HEMA and Longsword for that long as well, being thrown through things. For Honor to be with you today. <laughs> this game is brutal. <laughs> yeah, and I was terrible at it. The trouble with this one is doing really big moves one-handed with a sword that's better in two hands, it's just really weak. Yeah, they seem angry in that. <laughs> that's where the <laughs> that comes from, right? Be angry and you can wield it with one hand? I've been angry and been weak at the same time. <laughs> I did enjoy like the backhand and the stab. Grab and throw would be more effective than a backhand. Demoralizing though, getting backhanded. Yes, yes, really humiliate them by hitting them open palmed in the face. Did you get open palmed in medieval times? Oh yes, and kicked at times. Sand thrown as well. Oh no. Throwing the sand was a great dirty move. The audience loved it. Pretty good move. The shoulder bash you probably wouldn't rear back to do because it's telegraphing, but mm. you can get a hit in to stumble him hit him again with the shoulder to make him stumble even more. It opens him up for a final, like, bigger one to take him out. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, like you said, kind of, it has to be a follow-up to something else. You can't just run in there with an exposed target. They're not already reeling backwards. Right. It's confident, <laughs> but that'll be the last thing you do. <laughs> you don't want to tell, when you telegraph in a fight is you're pretty much explaining to the person you're fighting what you're about to do. I so. am doing this. Please stop me by killing me. Right. <laughs> that's how you telegraph in words, but if you do that physically, that's the same result. I really appreciate using the, the half sword to turn the attack, you know, reverse it, and then start a combo of moves. Every move is strung off of a previous move that creates a threat. Yeah. So it's just like one thing after another. I like that a lot. Half Sword does create so many good follow-ups. I think Liam Neeson said it best, the blade isn't the only part of the sword. Again, I wouldn't attack that way. He's reacting to the other guy attacking him. Right. So it's like, okay, fine. Durrah. I will say playing that game, when you do pull that off, you feel pretty cool. Nice. Done my glass. I like this move because it's visually showing you changing stances, uh, which you don't see in a lot of games. Starts up here, you change stances to holding it back, which creates another way of opening the attacks. Claymore in this case looks extremely heavy. Him using his entire weight and using the hips to throw the attack is pretty real looking. With that longer weapon also, striking to a lower opening isn't as silly as if you had a shorter weapon. Right. Done my glass! I wasn't as a big a fan of doing the opening with that half sword move, slashing downwards. It looks really cool. Again, it executed quickly. The big sword does buy some time with that, so it's you know it's, it's kind of on the edge of being realistic. But the spin, the spin, <laughs> has to be a spin. Not a fan of it, but a spin. It's nice that we're not looking at several spin moves in a row because I'm not sure you'd be able to contain the anger. Well, it's less silly with that big of a weapon, but it's still really it's not a great idea. I think I did a good job pulling this off. It's a great sidestep initiating, kind of changing the angle of the fight. I was not able to create flames coming out of the back of me though, which I think was a bummer. That's your first mistake. Yeah. Oh, this is fun, finally getting some shield work. It's a little bit of a telegraph, 
but maybe a confidence thing like, come get me because I know I'm gonna block this and you're gonna go down. Following the block immediately with an attack, rotating over the shield is, is legit. I get a spin move, of course, <laughs> with the spinning. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that move. The shield wasn't really utilized, as, you know, even as a distraction. When you win a tournament fight with a spin move, you're gonna look back on all this and laugh. And that will not happen. <laughs> Some gorilla will just grab me and put me on the ground, and then I'll be like, what do I feel like a It's like, well, because you spun, you, you doofus. You'll be remembered. <laughs> as the guy who spun and then got thrown on the ground by a gorilla. <laughs> I think the historical term for this is stabity stab stab. Stabity stabity, yeah, is yeah. rip their guts out, move. I mean, versatile to use both weapons, of course. If you can get in there and move the shield out of the way, you're in a grappling distance. To just, and if once you get one in, just keep going. One's not gonna take them out. Key thing is, again, you gotta tie up that sword, then you can yeah. Easy armor go to up. town. Don't film me doing that, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I just like doing this. Is he, he sure they know what they're talking is about? Is he laying down milking a cow? What is this? Oh, no, man. Now this spinny move didn't bother me as much as some other spinny moves. Hit us with it. You can fake out, you can do preparations. For some reason it didn't bother me as much just because of creating the threat and creating the distance while doing it. The trouble that I'd say that I have with this game in general is it's tricky judging the distances between the characters, particularly because you can't see your character's feet while you're playing. But with this one, again, when I can see that like big distance threat is created, it's a lot more realistic to me. Yeah, in the same note, this game was the first time that I've seen any sort of melee fighting game allow you to change stances, sides you were holding a weapon, and it did have a little bit of more of the footwork involved, even though, like you said, you can't see your feet. But it was super dynamic, which made the game really fun. Oh, here we go. Pole axe time, yes. Yes, open up, stab him, and oh. throw him on the ground. Oh, I loved it. The only thing that I would do differently in a real fight than this is instead of opening with the head of the ax, I would use the Q. I would use the opposite side of, you know, the kind of pokey spear end of it. Just because it's faster, use the Q, get rid of their weapon, and then hammer them with the head. And then stab them, impale them, and throw them over you onto the ground. Right. A little flashy, but, you it's know, for the audience. really fun. In tournament, even though I haven't uh, witnessed a, a poleaxe tournament, <laughs> It's really unsafe because even a Polax trainer is really, really dangerous. They had one tournament and no one lived. Picking someone up under their cup and throwing them over you, that, that'd be the boss move. If you did nothing else in your Hema career, everyone would be like, that's the guy that did that to that yeah. guy. Did he win that fight? No. Yeah, it's like, who cares? He did that thing. It's on camera. No, so bad. Paul Axe, yes! Get that in there. The Paul Axe. <laughs> now, I wasn't a giant fan of that beginning guard position with the axe, but the way that, that combo flow was really cool. Yeah, I really enjoyed doing this move. Again, you get an awesome shield bash in to get them off balance. A cool whip around to get the full energy of the attack. Because they're already stumbling, you don't need to get in there as fast if you don't want to. Get that final finisher in. Like that. Do you see me? Did you see that coming? <laughs> in a practical matter, I, I would say it'd be safer at least dangle the sword out there before doing that shield punch. Covering that distance for the shield punch is that kind of zone of threat. You're in danger before you're presenting the threat. Right, the only getting thing them to focus on that first so that you can come in. Apparently this was me who did this one. <laughs> so many moves in one day. Like the previous one, it's just a different shield attack. With the kite shield, probably not easy to do the whip around. It's gonna slow your move. I take back what I said about using the shield, because with that kite shield, with how big that is, how long that is, you actually do have a little bit of range to it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, opening with it, whipping the shield that way, it's not a horrible idea. Yeah, especially if you want to create the distance. 
for honor, brutal and fun. <laughs> I wish we could got more flames off of us when we were doing those moves, but what are you gonna do? Follow Gameology on YouTube and Facebook. I'm Drew Curtis at Benjamin Pike Series. I'm Paul Suda at actor Paul Suda. For honor to all of you. <laughs> Field and you're following it immediately with an attack. I believe that one was from below. Uh, and if they've been hit, they let me just start over. That was garbage. Why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> it all up, Drew. <laughs> what the hell?